my newest book that's coming out this week is um, along the lines of these low content books um, you can really take advantage of stuff that's in the public domain mm -hmm. I don't remember if we talked about that last time I probably had like plans but hadn't done anything with it yet but you can um, go onto sites where they'll have like a list and maybe even like some PDFs or something of books that are in the public domain, mm -hmm. like uh, Frankenstein, you know, or or uh, I don't know, what was it? Like some of the psychologists and or like um, Frank Kafka, you know, these kind of any author that's been around, Oscar Wilde, obviously, you know, you could do like let's say Oscar Wilde, you do like a portrait. Of Dorian Gray, mm -hmm. and you make your own cover, and then Amazon wants you to add like a very specific stuff, like at least ten new illustrations within the book, um, some kind of editing or changing of you know to make it your version, so you're not just taking a PDF and, and putting a new cover on. Right. But it's not still a lot of work. Um, so that's one thing that I'm thinking of doing is making like covers and my own versions of these these kind of old horror stories. But this time, I found um, public domain comic books, horror comics. Hmm. Um, they're old enough, and the copyrights have expired. They're like, you know, from these defunct horror comic publishers that were like pre-code era, 50s. Yeah. And as long as you don't use, like, trademarked words, like, I wouldn't call it, like, creep show or, you know what I mean, Tales from the Crypt, these kind of things that I'm right. sure are trademarked. But if you get these kind of more obscure comics... I was able to figure out how to um, implement this, you know, low res stuff, turn it into high res stuff that is colorable, and I blanked out all those speech bubbles, and so it's interior pages of horror comics that you can write yourself or color whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. And that took uh, about six weeks to make a hundred page book. So you're working on this now, or you've actually already published it? Because I don't recall seeing that. No, it's, uh, I just announced it a couple of days ago on Instagram. It's been on okay. my little secret project. So it's going to come out, um, probably be uploading it this afternoon or tomorrow. And then it'll, you know, once Amazon makes it live, it'll be a couple of days later. Yeah. No, it's, it's called the Vintage Horror Adult Coloring Book. I love it. And you've already got a couple of other adult horror coloring books, right? Yeah, there was Monster Funk. Uh, that was the first coloring book, and that was all my illustrations, and it was all kind of probably too high concept. And looking back at it now, I was like, I wanted it to be funny, and I wrote stuff for it, and it was all uh, on the premise of you never get to hear about how the monsters smell, right? In a movie, you know, or books. There's no smells, but you would think that a monster would smell pretty bad. Yeah, and that was the whole that was the whole concept of the book, and each page was a different monster and talking about how badly it was, what it would smell like. Mm -hmm. And then I was hoping that people would color it with the scented markers, you know, because you can get like a nacho oh, cheese. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. I love that. <laughs> I didn't know If you mix like part. chocolate and nacho cheese, that's probably going to be what like, I don't know, the Swamp Monster smells like. It's too bad you couldn't have done something along the lines of like John Waters polyester where they had the scratch and sniff smell of vision that went yeah. along with the movie when you saw like you would you'd be able it, like why has there used to be such a scratch and sniff market like growing up, like what happened to that and what happened to that technology and why can't we utilize it in our own personal stuff? We have a kid's book that has uh, Mr. Rogers character, the tiger, Daniel mm -hmm. uh, goes to a bakery and you, you scratch and sniff parts of the book to, to smell the stuff that they're baking. Okay. It doesn't work very well. I don't feel like it. I feel like maybe the chemicals were, were quietly toxic <laughs> that made it really work. Maybe. You know, now they don't work as well. They don't smell as good, but they don't give you brain damage. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll never know because we are those people that would have gotten that. And it's like, that's just the way we are now. And going back to the uh, creating the, you, you were actually in the middle of, creating the monster funk, funk uh, coloring book when we first were taught when we talked last. So okay. you were, you were in the middle of making that and you had told me about it. And that was when I realized, or when, when you had turned me on to the whole like different sort of publishing manner that you could do on Amazon. Now, when you were doing this coloring book, what was your process? What was, how did you go about making the book like 
formatting it for a coloring book on Amazon. I guess people hearing this now are like going, what make coloring books on Amazon? Right. It's not like a separate thing. You're still making a regular book, but what's the difference in the process, I guess, to kind of explain to people? Well, let's see here. I mean, there's, there's the multi-page aspect of creating something which was still new to me. You know, I really was used to doing shorter term projects, either like a poster for a gig. Right. Uh, or, or you know, graphic design for a company, and then I got into doing T-shirts. But these were all these little one-offs. So doing a multi-page thing was a bit of a thing to get your he- head around first. And the first time with Monster Funk, I was just creating one page at a time and saving out a JPEG and into a folder, and then trying to kind of put them in order later. I would organize them in InDesign, Adobe. But you just like Keynote. You know, there's free apps that you can use to create a PDF. Yeah. So that shouldn't be intimidating for people. Um, but with this last book that we'll have to get into later, mm-hmm. uh, I've been using Clip Studio, and they have, like, their highest tier version of the of Clip Studio. It's called EX. And I figured out, oh, they let you make a multi-page book um, oh. where you set it all up, how many pages it's going to be, whatever. And then you get to kind of look at all of it, almost like um, I think – what is the app that Adobe has? I always am sad that I accidentally open it because <laughs> I never use Adobe's. Uh, lets you look at all your images more easily. Oh, like the bridge one or whatever? Or light- bridge. Yeah. I think like bridge where you're looking at all the files mm-hmm. that are associated with your book and then you, you double click on whatever you want to work on and it brings up that page and you work on it and it automatically... You, I guess you'd hit save, and it would save everything associated with that book every time you hit save. Is that what that so does? <laughs> one page or another, right? Okay. And then you double-click on the next page you want to work on, and it automatically closes the last one that you were working on and opens up the next one. So it's very like fluid, the way you can kind of bounce around from page to page, oh. see it all at the same time, and then you just export out that PDF, and then that's what you would upload to Amazon. Okay. I guess I never realized that's what that particular program did. I'd open that, that and like, what was the other one? Like not Lightworks, um, Lightroom or whatever. I never understood what those connection apps did. And I was like, I don't have time to figure it out. Cause I, the only time I ever used Adobe products when I was at, was when I was working at an office and it'd be like, mm-hmm. I don't care. I just need to finish this thing and get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> 